So the Lorentz gauge, uh, we choose the divergence of A to be equal to mu naught epsilon naught, the time derivative of V. And you're probably wondering why in the world did we pick this? And the answer is symmetry. You'll see. Watch what happens when you plug this in. Um, so when we go here and this complicated equation and we plug in our A that has the, 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 um, the divergence equal to that funky number we get, this is what we get for the, the, um, the current. So we get the Laplacian of A vector minus the um, gradient of the divergence of A which is set to be minus u naught epsilon naught dv by dt. Then we add in dv by dt, and that's going to equal minus u naught the current. Okay, and so these two terms cancel because we chose the divergence of a to be that. Okay, and so what we're left in, left with is this rather simple equation minus mu naught epsilon naught a vector. Am I doing this right? I should d by dt squared. Okay, so that's how we calculate a given j. So v just drops out of the picture. That makes things much easier than they used to be. Okay. Uh, what happens when we plug it into um, Gauss's law. Well, we had, before we had the Laplacian of V plus the time derivative of the divergence of A is equal to minus one over epsilon naught, the charge density. Now we have the Laplacian of V plus the time derivative minus mu naught epsilon naught, the second time derivative of V is equal to minus one over epsilon naught rho. Okay which seems to be more complicated than it needs to be. But if you look really hard, you'll see a certain symmetry between these two equations, okay? I apologize for putting that in late, okay? So this operation of taking the Laplacian of something, okay? And subtracting mu naught, epsilon naught, of the second time derivative, we call that the Dalmbertian. Excuse my pronunciation. It's a box, it's a square box. Um, the gradient has three points in the triangle, so it suggests it's doing three dimensions. This is doing four dimensions. This is actually the square of the Dalmbertian. Okay. So this one has the three dimensions x, y, and z plus the time dimension, so there's four points in the box. And uh, unfortunately, um, this is a this is by definition. We just that's the way it is. Um, when I was reading the book, I'm used to the internet, and when you're looking at Unicode fonts, uh, Unicode text, and there's a there's a symbol in there that isn't in your character set, you get a box, the down Persian. So, um, looking at the book, um, when I first saw that, um, after you know not looking at the book for so long, forgetting about the down Persian. Um, it looks like it's some character that the, the printer didn't know what it was supposed to look like. But it is indeed supposed to be a square. And so with the Dalbertian, we can write these two equations out as the Dalbertian squared of A is equal to minus u naught j vector, and the Dalbertian of V equals minus 1 over epsilon naught rho. So now we have these really cool equations that look to be and actually are um, comparatively simple. So given the current, we can calculate A. Given the row, we can calculate B. And then from A and V, we can calculate everything else that we ever need. So that is the Lorentz gauge. And this is the one that when you're dealing with things that are moving around quickly, you'll want to start using. Uh, the Coulomb gauge is great for static charges. It gives you a great feel, but it's not really good for getting exact answers. So hope that helps. Take care. Bye.